But you didn't have to help me stop him because this is as far as I was going anyway. Do you mean you ran this team out here on purpose? <laughs> I sure did. Do you mind telling me why? Well, I wanted to get here before somebody else got the same idea as me. Well, you just take a look around you. Did you ever see a better place in your whole life for a farm? It does look pretty good. Oh, pretty good. I ain't seen land like this in a thousand miles. You just, just take a look at this earth. It'd grow anything. Are you sure right about that, Whit? Mr. Shannon, you've lived in this territory. How near is the nearest settlement? Oh, roughly 150 miles. We'll put the house over there by those pines and then the barn a little ways over. I'll tell you what. I'll ask Mr. Hale if he'll camp the train over here a little closer. Maybe when the folks know you're set on staying here, they'll give you a hand putting up your house. Oh, that's mighty nice of you, Duke. Thank you very much. Well. Did you hear what he said, Helen? If those people take a notion, they could put up a house in a barn today. Quit, I don't want to stay here. Well, of course you do, honey. Not, not without any neighbors, not a hundred and fifty miles from the civilization. Look, honey, I'm a farmer. I'm a good farmer, you know that. And a good farmer needs a good piece of land, and when it's here for the taking, then why shouldn't he take the best he can find? All my life, I, I dreamed about having the finest piece of land around. I've been looking at ground all the way from Springfield, and this is it. Right here in this valley, this is the land I've always wanted. This is my farm, Helen. And you're going to love it, too, I promise you that. Here 
everything's done but this, but that's the most important part because when this door is on its hinges, it's gonna turn that log cabin into a home just like magic. Nothing could turn anything into a home in this place. Oh, you just wait till our furniture's in the house and the door's on its hinges. You won't know but what you're still back in Springfield. What about when I look out the window? And there's nothing as far as the eye can see. Will I know the difference then? Well, give yourself a chance, Helen. Come on now, join the others. They're our friends. They put up a house and a barn just for us. And tomorrow they'll be gone and we'll never see them again. We'll never see anybody again. I can't live like that, Whit. They're waiting for us, Helen. They're gonna make a celebration out of the hanging of the door like a cornerstone ceremony. That wouldn't be right if you're not there. You just haven't heard one word I've said, have you? All you can think about is that door. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, I wish we'd left it back in Springfield, and I wish your father had left it in Massachusetts, and I wish his father had left it in England where it belongs. It belongs here. Look at it. Look at this fancy carving. Nothing about it belongs here, and neither do we. Daddy, Daddy, Judy, she hurt herself. <laughs> stay here now. Yes, I can, Helen, more than ever now. I'll take the train to the first town I can get a stagecoach home. This is her home. Take Jimmy and Sally with me. We need each other more than ever now. Yes, we do. Not here. Nothing will. Jimmy's my little girl, too, and I'm grieving for her, same as you are. But you've got to look at it this way. A wagon train starts out with a lot more people than it ends up with. You remember that little Harding baby that died just a week after we joined the train? Her folks didn't turn back. Neither Mrs. Carlson when her husband died. She's nearly 70 years old. Fact is, I don't know of a person that ever turned back because they lost a loved one. That's their thinking happened anywhere. Could have happened to our little Judy back in Springfield. There were trees for her to climb there, too. You know why we came west, Helen. Those reasons haven't changed. All I'm asking you is please try to remember all our hopes and all our dreams. My baby died here. That's what I'll remember. I have to tell you this now, Whit. I never wanted to come 
Only my love for you made me do it. That isn't enough now. You don't mean that. I mean it. to get the rest of your things into the house. I'll see that you get it. Thank you, Mr. Hill, but I'm not moving into the house. I'm turning back. I'm going home. Oh? I'm sorry to hear it. Sorry. Is it because of what happened? That does make it impossible, don't you think? No, ma'am, I don't think it does. I know your hurt's deep, Mrs. Martin, but I also know that time will show you mercy. What I fear for you now is that sometime later you may regret having left. I won't regret it, ever. What I'm trying to say is that you can't leave the memory of what's happened behind. You turn back, it'll turn back with you. Will it make you feel any better by going back? Will it make you feel any worse by staying? How do you know what my feelings are? Well, I know that in this beautiful valley, you can work and build a good life for you and your family. And you can be proud of what you accomplish. And in that pride, you can find love and happiness and fulfillment. Do you think you can find those things by giving up and going back? Why can't anybody understand? I hate this place. I hate this land. It took my baby from me. I never want to see it again. Well, I do understand, Mrs. Martin. I understand how you feel at this moment, but... Later. How could you know how a mother feels? You of all people. You a man with no family ties. You you don't have to stay in one place. You're free to roam up and down this god forsaken country to your heart's content. What could you know of homes or families or or fulfillment? You're right, Mrs. Martin. I have no family ties. But it wasn't always that way. It wasn't so very long ago. I had a wife and a son. And I had a daughter, too. And we had a home in St. Joseph, Missouri. Is there anything else you want me to do, Mother? Oh, uh, Marie, take a look at the turkey. I just did. Well, see that everything is on the table, then. I did that before I went to look at the turkey. Oh, that lantern. That scene its last homecoming celebration. Are these glasses all right, Mother? Yes, they'll be fine. Oh, I hope we look all right. Uh, Jeff, you better pour that cider so that we can drink a toast to your father the minute he steps through the door. Then you'd better hurry up. Chris! <laughs> Oh, welcome home, Christopher. I've waited a long time to hear those words, my darling. An awful long time. Welcome home, Daddy. That was my little girl. Hi, Dad. <laughs> Jeff. Well, you certainly did your share of growing up while I was away. Over two inches. Good to see you, son. It's good to see you, too, Dad. <laughs> Excuse me, I've got to go pour the cider. Well, wait till you girls see what I brought you from California. 
Mother says we have to wait till after supper. Well, your mother's always right, isn't she? <laughs> Here you are, Dad. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Here's to my family together again. And here's to the day when I'll never have to leave them again. Sped by all too soon, as they always did when I was home. And they grew into months, and then it was time for me to go into the city to begin organizing another wagon train. I'd have only three more weeks with my family before I'd have to leave them again. What's this, a toast? It is. Well, I thought we only had toast when Dad came home. In the morning, your father starts signing up wagons for another train. We're going to drink to that. Christopher, when you came back from your last trip, you made a toast of the day when you would never have to leave your family again. Yes, I did. Now I'm going to drink to our family. Here's to our being a real family. A whole family. With children and a mother and a father who will never be separated from us again. Here's to the first family you sign up in the morning. The Christopher Hale family. Oh, my dear, how I wish I could promise you that right this minute. If it were only possible. It is possible, Christopher. It has to be. Janet, dear, you know how much I've always wanted to take you with me, all of you. And I will, but it just, it just isn't safe yet. There aren't many years left to raise them as children. Janet, dear, listen to me. For all the ten years I've been taking wagon trains across this country, I've held the one thought of that day when I could start our last trip when I could take my family with me. There hasn't been a day when I haven't kept my eyes open for the ideal spot to build our home. I haven't lost sight of our dream, Janet. But in all that time, I've come to know this country pretty well. I can tell you it's a great and beautiful land, but that's only part of it. It's a dangerous land, too. The suffering and hardships it puts to the people who challenge it are unbelievable. If you'd ever seen a human being die of thirst or hunger, or freeze to death in 15 feet of snow, or seen what happens to the victims of an Indian massacre, you'd understand why I'm not yet willing to put those I love through such a thing. The risks are just too great. But what about all those hundreds of people you lead west every year? Aren't the risks too great for them, too? You can't stop some people from going on ahead. And it's even necessary that somebody opens the country for those to follow. And if my experience can make it easier on them, I'm proud to be a part of it. I'm just saying I don't want my family to go through a thing like that yet. That's not what you're saying exactly, Christopher. The first year or two, yes. But then you began to like things the way they were. You liked taking the trains west. It got into your blood. You, you liked being part of the great movement to push back the frontiers and to close the gaps between the oceans. And that's admirable. And I love you for it. But you did lose sight of our dream. Of going out there together. As a family. Of building our home. Of being part of those families. To settle that wonderful country. Christopher, you have had your way of life. And you've had the security. 
of knowing that your family was safe and sound in St. Joe, where you didn't have to worry about them. You'll like your life the way it is. You never want to change it. Janet, how long has it been since you've had an attack of the fever? What does that matter? You'd just gotten over one when I came home, hadn't you? Well, yes, but... And that attack was hardly three months after the last one. Well, the attacks only last a week or so, and then they're gone. You the know that. the comfort of your own home, yes, but on a wagon train, under ordinary circumstances, you need every ounce of strength you have to survive. Janet, you were right about one thing. It has become a way of life. But now, I've got to tell you this. The only real reason I ever left you behind was because I knew there was no way we could ever beat the fever to California. Chris, if that's the reason, please take us. I know I can make it because I have the will to make it. And with Josh and Ada... Josh and Ada, have you talked to them about this? Yes, they want to go with us. And even if I had to take it easy, Josh would be such a wonderful help. Oh, Chris, I've thought about this for such a long time. I must have the answer tonight. In all fairness to you, I must tell you that my feeling isn't shared by... by everyone here. Well, I don't see why we can't stay right here in St. Joe. I mean, why do we have to go west for anyway? Couldn't you just get a job around here, Dad, so that we could all be together? No, I couldn't, son. Some men take the city ways without any trouble at all, but I'm not one of them. Just why is it you don't want to go west? Well, it's just like you always said, Dad. Now, why should we have to go out there and fight Indians when we can stay right here where there aren't any? Are you afraid? A man can't expect his son to follow in his footsteps or even to think like he does when he's home barely enough to stay acquainted. I wanted you to see how badly he needs you. Chris, I'm tired of homecomings. So tired I've decided that this one has to be the last one. There'll be no more homecomings for you here, Chris. Marie, dear, you haven't said anything. How do you feel about it? I'm sorry, Daddy. But I'll do whatever Mother says. I knew you'd say that. Well, I don't care if you want to go or not, Mother. I'm staying right here. No man any age speaks to my wife that way. You're entitled to your opinions, but your mother and I make the decisions, and you abide by them. Never try to change that young man, because you'll fail every time. Now, we'll all drink to this. To the Hale family. And no more homecoming. There were the usual hardships, of course. Jeff became a valuable helper. And we made up for a lot of lost time, because now we could be together and work together as father and son. But it was my wife, Janet, who made me the proudest of all when she became ill. She'd been confined to bed for two days with a burning fever, and we'd been traveling over some of the roughest country we'd yet encountered. I... 
I do believe I'm feeling better. Are you, darling? We just didn't have another 50 miles of this rough country. Well, Chris, you mustn't worry about me. You have your hands full with the train. My responsibility to the train is one thing, but my responsibility to you is something entirely different. Chris, I don't expect and I don't want to be treated any different than any other woman on the train. Promise me. Well, no, I don't know about that. I might just have to make an exception every now and then. Oh. Like this. You make an exception like that any time you like. But even after the trail had smoothed out and the going was easier, Janet didn't recover as expected. You just can't rest in the jolting wagon. And the thing she needed most was peace and quiet and rest. Oh, why are we stopping? I don't know, Mother. Indians! Indians. Indians! Marie! Don't get upset, dear. Yes. There's nothing to worry oh. about. Give me a rifle, Marie, quick! No, no, there's not enough of them for that. They look like they're trying to be friendly. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe it's a trick. Chief Red Cloud, good to see you again. Red Cloud always glad to meet Wagon Chief Hale, who never once break treaty in ten summers, passing through Indian territory. I hope you're as generous to the man who takes my place next year. You not come again? No, this is my last trip. This time I settled with my family in California. Why not Wagon Chief stay here? Build house in Red Cloud's land. We be good friends. I thank you for the offer, but I've got to take the wagon train through to California anyway, and I've already picked out just the place I want. Wagon Chief know what best for family. Sorry you not come again. Here. I give you Red Cloud's knife. Token of everlasting friendship. Jeff, they're gonna stab Daddy! It was a trick! <laughs> Jeff, put down that rifle! Keep Red Cloud's a friend! I apologize, Red Cloud. I don't know what got into the boy. Bring boy here. I'm sure he didn't mean anything by it. He won't do it again, I promise you. Bring boy here. Go get him, Josh. Well, that was a fool thing to do, Jeff. Well, I thought he was going to attack Dad. Climb on behind me. The chief wants to see you. Me? Well, what for? I don't know. Just climb on, boy. Question, boy, answer. You drew your knife. I, I thought you were going to use it on my father. You, son of Wagon Chief? I, I'm sorry, Chief Red Clyde. I didn't know you were friendly. Red Cloud not want boy make same mistake again. Not want son of great Wagon Chief for enemy. 
thank you, sir. Boy and Red Cloud powwow. We smoke peace pipe. Now. But I don't smoke. You want to be enemy? Uh, no, sir. Then you smoke peace pipe. Cloud. I think you've taught him a lesson he won't soon forget. Boy, learn. Friendship with Red Cloud not come easy. Here. When he grow older, give him Red Cloud's knife. He make a good brave. <laughs> Say, Chris, it doesn't take a doctor to see that Janet can't travel another foot. I know, Josh. What can we do? Let's go back to the children. They've got to hear this, too. Is Mom any better, Dad? I'm afraid not. Marie, dear, Jeff, I'm afraid it's going to be a long while before you see California. You mean we're going to stay right here? We're going to settle this piece of land right here where we're sitting. Is it because of Mother? She's too ill to go on, dear. If we're going to keep her with us, we've got to get her into a bed that doesn't jolt around all day. Got to get her into a nice, warm house. Do you understand? What about you, Chris? What do you mean, Josh? Well, you know what I mean. You made a promise to Janet you'd never be separated again. Can you keep it? I don't know, Josh. Right this minute, I just don't know. <laughs> The people helped build my house, just as the people on this train built one for you, Mrs. Martin. They worked fast, like they were all as anxious to see my wife safe, comfortable in a sturdy house as I was. It's an inspiring thing when people band together to help one another. You'll never see folks any happier than when they're giving of themselves like that. A house raising is a wonderful American custom. I hope it never disappears from this land. A house that would have taken one man months to build was in less than 10 hours standing there ready to be occupied. Well, how's my girl? Oh, oh just being here. All together in our own house, knowing that we 
finally made it the best medicine in the world. I'm so happy we're all together for good. That's a mighty fine house you built for my family. Tight and warm. We're mighty grateful to you. Now, many of you have asked me what I intend to do, whether I intend to stay here with my family or go on to California with the train. Let me say this. All you good people have paid a price to be part of this wagon train part of the Christopher Hale tray. And I respect your right to get exactly what you paid for. I respect my obligation to do the job I agreed to do. I can wait a little while to live in that house you built. I'm going on to California with you. Hey. <laughs> Wait just a minute, please. I've got something I want to say. Maybe I got no place saying what I'm going to, considering Chris is my own brother, but I think it needs saying. I don't have to tell you what it took for Chris to stand up here and say what he did, telling you he was willing to leave his wife and his children behind because of his duty to you. Fact is, if Chris had asked you to relieve him of that duty, I don't doubt but what there's a person among you who'd say, stay right here, Chris. I'll not hold you to your bargain. But he didn't ask you that. He wouldn't put you on that kind of a spot. And that's what I'm going to ask you to do. Put yourself in his place for just a minute, and then ask yourselves, if you don't think you could make it to California with Bart Taylor leading you instead of Chris. Now, you can all let Chris know what you decide as each one of you puts a piece of twig into this hat. All right? Yeah. All right, come on now, let's vote. Just a minute. Now, I, I appreciate what Josh has just said to you folks. And I wouldn't be telling the truth if I didn't admit that I would like to be able to stay here with my family. But voting on it won't be necessary because I've already made my decision. Have you considered these folks might feel better about it themselves if they had a voice in that decision? Uh, they're not objecting to the vote. No. Why don't you let them have their say? It's for Janet and the children as much as for yourself. Let them vote. You're all aware that the decisions I make as your wagon master are, in my best judgment, always made in the interest of the greatest number of you. Sometimes those decisions hurt individuals. But I ask you to remember that now. I ask that you consider only those things which you honestly believe to be in the interest of the greatest number of people on this train. Chris, uh, I'll need your hat too. I guess 
I don't really want to know just yet. It's a hard decision, Chris. But mark my word, they'll let their hearts rule their minds. They'll leave you here. Chris! You're going to stay. Stay, Would you, stay, you stay, stay, stay. stay. Would you believe it? There isn't a single half-inch twig in either hat. Not a vote against your staying here. Are you sure? <laughs> Ought to be. Bart Taylor and I counted every one of them ourselves right in front of everybody. Well, that's odd. There ought to have been a few dissenters among all those people. Well, there might have been at first, but when the voting got going, it was obvious the big majority was voting for you to stay. So somebody suggested they all make it unanimous, and, well, here, count them yourself. 304 little two-inch pieces of wood. Oh, I can't keep this from Janet another minute. I'm going to wake her up and tell her. Now, wait a minute, Ada, not just yet. But the good news will do her a lot more good than sleep. She's already assumed I'm staying. And I haven't let her think anything different. Well, all right, Chris, if that's what you want. Morning will be time enough. She took sick. Oh, but... Oh, Chris, I hope you don't mind. I told Janet the good news that you were staying. Well, you know me, Chris. I can't keep anything to myself. That's all right. I'll get the other sleepy heads up. the voting last night and that you were still sitting in your chair this morning. I knew what you were going through. What a terrible decision to have to make. Wanting to stay here with us and yet knowing what must have been in the hearts of those people when they voted the way they did. Imagine how they must have been thinking of those long miles ahead without you, how they must love you. I thought for a while last night, all I needed was their approval to release me from my duty to them. And I knew down deep all the time that nobody could release me from my duty except myself. I wasn't much help rattling on about being together for good. I'm sorry. I should never have let you think that. I knew right from the first what I had to do. When are you leaving? Fifteen minutes. Be on time, Christopher. Another minute and I... I don't think I can let you know. One more homecoming, Christopher. Only one more. 
you'll never know how glad I am it isn't in St. Joe. <laughs> I knew Janet was in good hands with Josh and Ada to look after her and Jeff and Marie to help them. The house had been built in Chief Red Cloud's territory, so I didn't worry too much about an Indian attack. I knew I had made the right decision in fulfilling my contract to lead the train to California. live here. Oh, oh, no. No, it's all right. Well, Chief Red Cloud told my father we could live here. Well, I even smoked a peace pipe with your chief. And he was just by here a few weeks ago just to say hello. Red Cloud is old woman. He lets white men make fool of him. Not us. We leave tribe. We make you leave land. Uh, now, you you better leave us alone. Red Cloud, he he has a treaty with my father. What's keeping that boy?
waiting for you. I had to wait for you. I never should have left you. I had no right to go. You can't carry the blame for it. You mustn't. Oh, why did I trust that Indian? It wasn't. It wasn't with Red Cloud. It was Renegade. Jeff told me before. It would have. It would have happened anyway, even if you'd been here. But thank God you weren't. No, you can go on living for, for all of us. Please, don't let this destroy you. about the next few days, except that I dug five graves. I guess I didn't even eat until I was found by the scout from another wagon train, but this one. Even as Flint McCullough was trying to bring me out of my shock, Janet's last words were coming true. The terrible guilt I felt was already destroying Never forgive me, Mr. Hale, for the things I said to you. I didn't know. Of course you didn't. But I still don't understand what... Why I didn't go back east to live? Why I continue to lead people into this uncivilized country after what happened? Many families will die. Some, but many won't. Pretty soon they'll be joined by another family, and then ten more, and then a hundred. Then there'll be a town somewhere else, another town. That's the way a great country grows. The wagon master can help in all that. He can be a part of it. Mrs. Martin... My family perished so that others who followed might live. And they died in vain only if there are no others. Others like you. Why wasn't England a good enough place for this door? Why isn't St. Joe a good enough place for it now? If a man can't be free where he is, he'll go where he can be. We weren't oppressed in Missouri. Why can't my husband be happy there? Why can't all the people on this wagon train be happy where they were? Why... Hey, someplace else always better. For the same reason man invented the wheel before the rocking chair. If it wasn't for his instinct to explore and populate far off places, he'd have invented the rocking chair first. Only he'd be using it in a cave. That's, that's a little heavy for you, isn't it, Mrs. Martin? Thank you, Mr. Hale. Thank you for everything. But if this door is ever going to be lifted, I'm the one who's got to do it.
Mr. Hale just told me the story about his family. And why? I wonder why he was willing to torture himself like that. Just for me. Because it's important what we're doing here, Helen. To a man like Mr. Hale. That makes us important people. You know, Chris, yesterday Mrs. Martin wasn't going to stay. What do you suppose happened to change her mind? Oh, I have an idea. She just found out the difference between the wheel and the rocking chair. A wheel and a rocking chair. That's surely a wheel. You know, there's four of them. They're round. They've got spokes in them. The wagons run on them. Then there's a rocking chair, too. I don't know what wheels are. I don't know what rocking chairs are, but what does he mean? Well, if you'd been listening, I think what Chris means is that probably maybe... Well, if she had... Uh... Why do you ask such stupid questions all the time? Come on, let's get the furniture in the house. Door. 